How everybody doing? Everybody good? Good. All right, Ken, you got a general question to start with. Just Love the it. group as a whole, and the addition of height is, is like a noticeable thing for the receiving core. How, how would you kind of evaluate everything and the fact that you have some tall guys? Um, it's been pretty good, you know, with the new guys picking up and those freshmen coming in. It's uh, It's been a group that's uh, learning curve is, has jumped tremendously from spring to now, and uh, you got some engaged guys, you know, some guys that want to go compete. It's a competitive room, so everyone in there knows that, hey, they can't have stuff. You got to come in, you got to play ball, and every day you got to be consistent. So, um, uh, you know, with any kind of competition, it brings the best out of your guys, and uh, you always love to see it. All the coaches we've talked to pretty much in the DBs yesterday have talked about Landers, speed. You know, how fast is the guy and just what has he added to you so far? You know, it's just different when you got a guy that long, that tall, that fast and and uh, can contract the ball well, you know, and uh, he's he's added he's added to our room something different, you know, and um, and I actually think it's picked up other guys as well, you know, to say, hey, look look at that, you know, and um, he's jumped into it, he's he's eager to learn every day, and and he's getting better and better every day as he learns and and know how we do things. You know, he wasn't here in the spring, but him being an older receiver, has that allowed him to kind of pick up things maybe quicker than, say, the two high school kids that weren't here in the spring? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, he, he gets it. He knows what college football is all about. You know, he went from SEC to playing in the MAC for a little bit and coming back to this SEC, he knows, you know, what to expect, you know. So he's not, you know, that bright-eyed kid coming in like everything's surprising him. You know, he, he's, he knows what to expect. He knows he needs to learn. And, and I have to be ready for my moment, for my opportunities. Jaden made progress from the spring, summer, now to preseason. I'm, I'm guessing you're saying Hazelwood, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, man, tremendous. I think that's a guy that's going to gonna see a lot, a lot of success throughout the season. And um, looking forward to it, you know, just a really, really smart guy who understands ball, knows what you're trying to get done, and uh, every day is getting better and better. Go down the list, Keytron. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously he came to Arkansas kind of raw, but yep. a lot of physical ability. What are your thoughts on him? Man, um, a guy I'm just excited to see. You know, um, it's kind of the theme of the room of of just being consistent, being who we are. You know, and competing your butts off, and that's what Keytron has done. I mean, since he stepped on campus last spring, and um, man, the jump that he's made to now, it's 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 awesome to see. You know, he's such a good dude that he's going to say yes sir to anything you say and try to go get it done, try to go execute it. And, you know, those are the best players, the ones that can hear it, see it, um, and, and actually translate it to the field. So that's, he's that kind of guy, and he's doing that. And he's seeing, he's reaping the benefits from it right now. This is probably a, a way off question, but um, at some point you got to kind of pare it down to six, seven guys you're going to travel with. Yep. And, and you're going to say these are our three starters right here are going to yep. play the most. At what point in camp does that start to kind of – is that the yeah, end of, I mean, for the end of camp? Or? You know, you want to see these guys compete in a, at least some live ball. You know, we haven't even had a scrimmage yet, so it's a little tough. But, you know, you try to move guys around, get guys reps. You know, guys that don't get a chance with the ones and you see them doing good things in the, with the later half of the groups, you get those guys up and go see what they got, you know, see what you got. So, um, like I say, the competitive nature of the room right now is so awesome that everyone's competing their butts off. And, and after a while, hey, the best ones play. And, and it's all about that execution, right? It's ex execution. It's a production-based game. You know, either you win or you lose. So um, either you got the job done or you didn't. And who's getting that job done more often, those will be the three on the field. And like you say, there always will be a rotation. So um, it's no reason to hang your head because you're not one of those three. Um, just be ready to roll when your number's called. And usually you get that opportunity. If, you, if, you're doing, if you're handling your business, you get that opportunity. And when that opportunity comes, you got to take advantage. Can't be that guy soaking and not ready for it. Kenny, I apologize. This has been asked. I'll, you started a little early. I walked in. Uh, Isaiah Satania, what have you seen from him since he came here in the summer? And Sam was talking the other day about his ability to pull away, uh, you know, the pull away speed. How much does that type of, you know, natural talent help him maybe bridge the gap from not being here in the spring? I mean, you know, that's what we want to do. You know, this type of things that he's really, really good at with his track background. Um, I mean, he, he's the kind of kid that he does the things that we want to do. You know, having a really, really, really good run game, when you stick that ball in the gut of the running back, you get one-on-ones on that perimeter, and you need guys that can go stretch the field, and he does that. Um, a very, very smart kid that's picking up on the, on things, learning very fast, a guy that, that – um, is is definitely a guy that we're looking at to keep keep pushing, keep pushing, keep competing his butt off, and it's it's kind of that 
that that freshman class as a whole, all three of them with McAdoo and um, and um, Sam Bakke, they all just compete their butts off, man. They're ready to learn. They yes sir, no sir, guys that step on the field and try to do exactly what you say. And uh, I mean, everything you teach them, it, it's it, I won't say new to them, but it's something that they they're trying to get down. You know, and whether if they get it down that day, they're, they're standing after practice 15 minutes to get it down or whatever it is. And you can just see the want out of those guys. So as a coach, man, you just love to have those kind of guys who want to be great. So it makes me want to be even better for them as a coach. You know, he was in high school with football track. He just faster than anybody else on the field. I wonder how does it compare to, to the other receivers from what you've seen? Yeah, I mean, um, it's different, you know. Track speed is different, you know, in a – a young guy coming in doesn't have all that taxing on his body, you know. So he's he's right now. I mean, he's running by it um, a lot of guys and things, and that's that's what he's asked to do. So um, we'll keep keep progressing him, keep progressing him, keep giving him a chance to compete, and keep keep watching him do his thing. Coach, I want to get your thoughts on the other two freshmen. First, Sam Bakke. What have been your first impressions of him? What he brings to the table? Man, eager guy, eager guy. I mean, texting you at night, texting you in the morning, wants to know what he needs to do. Um, uh, what he needs to correct, things of those nature. So he's just a guy that he, he you can tell, like I said earlier, he just wants to be great. And any guy like that, he makes a coach even better because I want to be great for him. You know, so he's the type of guy, he's tough, very tough, and uh, he's not scared to go throw himself in there in the fire and make a mistake. You know, I tell guys all the time, if you're going to make a mistake, do it 100 miles per hour. It's my job to fix it. I can't fix effort. And he's he's like the epitome of that, a guy that's going to go hard. And I, and I can coach him all day, every day. And with Quincy, he was able to go through spring ball with y'all. Can you tell a difference now that he's already gone through that and kind of been there, done that? 100%. 100%. I mean, it's um, it's easy to see he was a guy that came in early, um, got a good grasp of the offense, um, obviously still learning. You know, he's still um, in that learning curve pro progress to where you can tell once a kid gets it down, it, I think he's going to be an animal. I think he's going to be an animal. Coach, I want to go back to Sam Bakke for a second. Mm -hmm. Saw him today at practice. He made a nice catch on a 50-50 ball. Yeah. Kind of what role do you see him having? I know he's just a freshman, but yeah. it seems like, you know, he, he looked really comfortable doing something like that. Yeah. Um, don't really want to define roles yet, quite yet, but I do think he's a guy that's competing his butt off, you know, trying to get on that bus, trying to get on the plane. And um, right now he's putting himself in a good position to do that. So he needs to keep coming along, keep uh, learning. And as he learns that playbook even more and more and more and learn defenses more, um, he's going to put himself in a really, really good position. So um, he's just got to keep going. Just got to keep going. A part of this would be determined, Kenny, but how much are you counting on have? How much do you expect to have Malik Horns be a receiver this year? Um, that's a really good question. I mean, um, he's different out there, you know. So he's a guy that we want to throw him out there, be smart about it all, and let him go get a chance to affect the game, you know, because he has that ability at whatever he's doing out there. With his quarterback, wide eye split out, wherever it is. I mean, he's got a chance to affect the game in a positive way. And so we want to give him that chance. You just feel like he's too good to be standing on the sidelines. I mean, because KJ's, if he's not hurt, it's going to get probably all the snaps. On yeah, that's how we, not, yeah, that's how I feel right now. Is, and we feel right now it's just as if he's a guy that he can't sit over there and watch. You know, he has, he has to get a chance to go affect the game. And, and we want that chance for him. Coach, uh, I, I, Approximately how many reps is he getting with you guys in practice Ooh. at wide receiver Malik? Ooh. And uh, oh, and no, it, I knew what you said. My bad. Yeah. yeah. And and in the uh, meeting rooms, he is he doing any wide receiver meetings? No, he's all quarterback meeting. You know, um, he's he's a quarterback. He's a quarterback. And um, approximately, I wouldn't I know off the top of my head. I mean, we're trying to get the kid enough reps to know what he's doing. You know, know what he's doing. Go out there, catch a few balls, be able to go out there and compete and and go execute. You know. You're finished. On, you're you're focused on the finish of the pass. But I was curious <laughs> your opinion on, uh, you know, in being a former quarterback, uh, your opinion on how KJ has looked mm -hmm. and his progression yes. since last season, since the spring, and and also Malik, uh, how he's progressed at quarterback. Yeah. Um, I start with KJ first. Just um, number one, I thought mindset wise, man, just a guy that came out and and you could tell his comfortability in being a leader. You know, he's a starter for a year now. You know, you can see it. You can see it. He's a guy that's talking more now, that's uh, coming to the sideline, talking about what he's seeing more, talking to the wideouts more, what he wants, what he sees for those guys in order for them to be successful, you know, things of that nature. So it's more in that leadership factor that I see he's progressed. Um, Malik just uh, been a year older in the offense. You can tell he's knowing what he's doing out there. Um, you're able to move him around more and do things with him to help him affect the game and things of that nature. So I think both, of, both being a year within the – offense and, and actually 
seeing that time on the field from last year, those guys have progressed in the leadership roles and the roles of being able to bring the offense together as a whole, you know. Seniors like uh, Tyson and De Devion Warren and then your biggest producer. I'm wondering who uh, is the loudest leadership voices in your room? Oh, yeah. I mean, number one by far would be – it'd be Jaden Hazelwood. I mean, he stepped in, an older guy that's played some ball, seen it at another place, um, another conference and things. He steps in and, and a really, really smart guy who understands what's going on around him. And, and um, he steps up. He steps up and he talks. You know, he talks. So he's able to lead guys on. Um, I do think Warren Thompson is a leader guy. Um, he's not a big talker. He's going to lead by example. You know, he will help the young guys as much as he can. Um, he's not a raw, raw guy. You know, he's not that. But he is a guy that's going to go out there and, and uh, lead by example, show guys how it's done. So I'm very proud of where he's at right now. A couple of days ago, we were leaving the field, and you might see this kind of stuff all the time. But we were leaving the field, and Hazelwood made a catch beyond Catalan <laughs> with one hand like this. Yeah. Have you seen anything more like that? Or maybe well, that's that who I best? told him. I'm sorry, that's what I told him he has to be. You know, he's that guy. He's that guy that when we give you a chance, man, you go make the play. You know, it's not almost. It's not 50-50. It's not anything of that nature. It's, hey, it's my ball in the air. And that's who you got to be. And he, he takes it on full force. He wants it. You know, he asks for it. And so um, I think he's a guy that takes it. And, and he knows if he wants to be a leader, he has to go show it. He can't just talk about it. So that's what he does. You mentioned Warren a minute ago. Uh, consistency with the deep balls, I think, maybe something you – talk to him about what have you seen from him in the camp I'm gonna say consistency is a tire group entire group as a whole with us being so young you know the older guys in the room are guys that came from other places to where that we have to be consistent as a group and uh talking to him that's one of the biggest words I use in the room I use with him you know he knows it and uh him just being a consistent guy on, on and off the field is only going to help him on that next level and I think he's doing those things to make that step Curious with all the one-on-one -on -one stuff y'all have done so far, have the, any of the DBs kind of stood out to you that have been particularly tough on your guys? Man, I love it. It's iron sharp and iron out there, man. It's a bunch of them, man. They're, they're, they're out there competing their butts off. You know, it gets very, very competitive at times, and we love it. You know, it's, that's what camp should be. You know, we, we shouldn't – they shouldn't bully us. We shouldn't bully them. You know, if we want to be a great team, it should be back and forth action. It should be very competitive. And uh, you can tell in one-on-ones, man, I tell my guys all the time, one-on-ones is an offensive drill. And there's contested stuff every single time when that ball's in the air is contested. And that's how you know you're playing against a really, really, really good defense. I mean, uh, it, it, I don't want to point out one or two of them because there's so many of them, man, and they're competing their butts off. Coach Bowman and Coach Odom got those guys working, and, and it's only making us better. And I, I make sure to mention it to them every day, every rep. I want to make sure those guys know, like, hey, we want to bring it, and I want y'all bringing it, and thank y'all. Y'all are making us better. So when y'all see something happen on Saturday, know that was because of you. So the pageant going on Thursday. I'm wondering what you think about the physicality component for your group. Yes, I mean, it's, it's uh, you've never seen a football game won without physicality, you know. So um, it's something that I preach on that perimeter with our run game. Um, I mean, that back's not getting touched to five to eight yards downfield. And so now we make the touchdown blocks. And so in order for that to happen, you got to bring a physica certain level of physicality to the game. You know, you don't you don't go out and – see how somebody else is bringing it and match theirs. You make someone match yours, you know. And so that's, that's, uh, that's the mentality we want. That's the mentality we bring. I'm happy that the leadership we got in the room, they, they, they keep that going. You know, they keep it going. They make sure that every day they know we set the tone. Talking about physicality, saw you guys had a, a wide receiver screen set up where you had two receivers blocking for the one guy who catches it. I mean, how much of an emphasis do you put on blocking there and especially, you know, on those screens when you got to have those guys out there blocking? Exactly. I mean, um, a, a bunch, a bunch. I put a bunch of emphasis on it for the simple fact of, you know, um, how good our run game is. You know, um, it's awesome. So, you know, as a wide out, you want a great running game. You got a great running game, you're getting one-on-ones on the perimeter. And that's what every wide I should ask for, you know. And so um, it, it, I feel like if, I stre if whatever we're stressing, whatever we're emphasizing, we got such good guys, they're going to go out there and they're going to do exactly what we're asking them to do. And so I'm emphasizing it as much as I can. Um, with our run game, those things on the, on the perimeter are big for us because we throw it out there. We might get light numbers out there. If we can make one miss, it should be a big one. Coach, thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate y'all.